Okay, let's get on to advice this week, everybody. All right. Hey, Bill, I always feel like you give great uh, advice. Well, thank you. So I thought maybe you could give me some in this situation. I was in a local shop a few weeks ago, and there was a little hottie working there. Um, I had seen her there once before, and both times she really caught my attention. I had the urge to ask her out while I was there, and I did, and I did not say anything to her other than some idle nonsense about sunglasses I was looking at. Oh, that's the worst. Uh, the little bit we did talk, though, she seemed really cool and really nice. My advice is how can slash should I ask her out without looking like um, coming off like a creep. I'm a good-looking guy, have a great career as an attorney, but when it comes to ladies, I can be shy sometimes. See, is that, you know, that's a very strong thing that you're able to admit that, but every guy just went, oh, what's the matter? You go up and say something to her. That's, that's how guys handle it. We just beat it out of each other. Okay. We said what I'm trying to work on. But he says, every once in a while, you see a girl that blows you away. And uh, this time, I wanted to do something about it. Uh, all right. All right, dude. This is what you got to do. You got you got to you got to work on your self-esteem. Okay? You know you're a good-looking guy, and you have a great career. Believe it or not, that's game, set, and match. Do you know the amount of fucking not even good-looking guys who have a shit job? And they're just scumbags, but they're assholes who are out there fucking crushing it every goddamn weekend because they just have the balls to walk up and talk to these women, you know? This is what you got to do. You, you, you actually know what you got to do. You said you can be shy sometimes, but you're saying you're working on it. So there you go. Just keep – look, dude. She probably – if you're a good-looking guy and you're a fucking attorney, he actually said something here. I'm hoping to see you at Caroline's in May. If, uh, if my dickhead friends can get their shit together. If they can't, maybe with your stellar advice, I can even bring this hottie to the show. Why don't you just do that? Go in there, make her laugh, joke around with her and anything, and just, just fucking lay it on the line. Listen, I'm really attracted to you. I think you're beautiful. However the fuck you want to say it. And just say, you know, I think it, it's always good if you have somewhere that you're going. Just say, I'm going to this comedy show. I love, you know, I'm really into this stand-up comedian. I have an extra ticket. Would you like to go to? Women like going to stuff. You know, it gives them an excuse to get dressed up. It gives them an excuse to not feel fucking guilty when they're blowing you later because they actually went to some sort of ball or some shit, you know? (laughs) Ah, God. Even with advice, I'm awful this week. But the essence of it is there. All right. You already talked to her. Just go in there again. You're not going to come off like a creep. I actually think that it's easier to pick somebody up and get their number, at least back in the day. I have no game left anymore because I've been in a relationship too long. But I always found that it was easier for me to get a girl's phone number on the, at the fucking gym. Gym's a little bit harder, but like I used to do it on – I used to get it on the subway. Oddly enough, I had a better chance there than I did in some meat market bar – because I, I was never good when females had their guards up. When they knew what play I was running. Some guys can do that. They're like the old Packers. Like everybody knew the Packer sweep was coming and they Forrest Gregg still fucking ran over you. And some guys are like that. Even when women know they got their, their fucking guard up and they know what the fuck they're doing, they can still plow through it. They run over. The guys just run right over those girls like Forrest Gregg. And next thing you know, they're laying on their backs with their legs up in the air and they get the dick. I was never that guy. I was I snuck up on you. I waited for something stupid to happen that I could comment on, and then I'd get the girl laughing, and then when her fucking defenses were down, I'd uh, I'd wrestle her cell phone out from her fingers. <laughs> no, I, whatever. I'd somehow get her number. So what I would do is I would just go in there, and uh, I'll just keep re-explaining this 20 fucking times. Dude, get tickets to my show. All right? Look at me. I'll make a little money out of this advice. So now you got, you got somewhere that you're going to take her. Take her out, you know, a little dinner, you ski a comedy show. She's already fucking laughing. Halfway through my act, you, you do the old, you're laughing your ass off. Don't try to put your arm around her shoulder. That's old school, right? You put it right on her fucking thigh. You know, and then you sort of start creeping up there with your fingers, you know, like you're sort of thinking about something, going pinky, ring, middle, index. You just sort of work your way up like an inchworm. And then you're getting made fun of me because you guys are fucking walking out during my closing bit to go bang at the fucking W around the corner. Dude, it's right there. It's a layup. It's a fucking layup. All right, next one. Hey, Bill, huge fan of the podcast and all your stand-up and have made all my friends big fans of yours as well. I really enjoy the relationship advice, blah, 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 blah. All right. 
People actually are starting to address the fact that I've never been married and why am I taking your fucking ex- advice. Uh, here's my situation. I'm 29, recently graduated from medical school. After a good number of years uh, honing my boning skills in the free market, I'm ready to calm down and have a serious girlfriend. Ironically, um, the girl that I'm dating and wanted to get serious with was actually my college girlfriend and first love. We dated throughout college but broke up before attending different medical schools. During our years together, I cheated a lot, but to my knowledge, never got caught. A big part of the reason I was so promiscuous, besides being your typical piece of shit, cocky asshole guy full of testosterone, was because she was very sexually inhibited. No blowjobs. The routine, conventional positions, sex about once every other day, and that just wasn't cutting it for me. Now Now in every other category, she was amazing, fun to hang out with, but still ladylike, caring, respectable, educated, fashionable, and extremely beautiful. So like I said before, we broke up for about five years and are back dating again. And the sex is exactly the same. Now, while I'm grateful that some guy didn't completely smut her out during our breakup, I did expect, I did expect some sort of sexual maturation. Um, blowjobs remain few and far between and pretty subpar This guy's black, by the way, before you think this is something fucked up. Um, What makes it even more difficult this time around is after banging my fair share of broads in our off-season, my sexual prowess has grown significantly. It's hard because I really want to be faithful this time around and take the relationship more seriously, but I fear I'm not going to be sexually satisfied. My greatest fear is ending up like one of my father's friends who I always hear complaining about how shitty their sex lives have become after marriage. Um how I should have had all my fun now and blah, 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 stereotypical castrated merry man background noise. Uh, Fuck that extra sad shit. I'm not getting married unless I know my wife is going to be a lady in the streets and a freak in the sheets. (laughs) Uh, My question is, how serious should I take this problem? Should I be patient and hope that I can liberate her sexually or should I bail and keep searching for a God-faring, dinner-cooking super freak? If you don't mind asking, um, oh, if you don't mind asking Nia as well, I'd like to hear what the sister has to say. Oh, shit. I should have read that to her. By the way, I'm also black, so when you get to is it racist, 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 no, I'm allowed to say sisters. Uh, all right. Um, you know what? I really wish I read that part. I would have had her in here, but she's not around today. Um, what should you do? All right, number one, don't cheat on her. Uh, what you should do is you, sh- you should communicate this to her. Uh, obviously not the way you just said it to me. Um, oh, Jesus, this is this is tough. I, I'd have to ask you some questions. Let me ask you this. Do you feel she has the potential? That's That's what, that would be my number one thing. Is, all right, this is how I would do it. All right, fuck this. All right, now, now I'm back on track. This is what I would do. First thing I would do is I would, I would see if she has the potential. All right? If she's a good kisser, if she has a good touch, if when you're banging her, you don't feel like you're fucking riding in a goddamn, the back of a delivery truck. <laughs> the rhythm's there. She has, she has the basic tools. All right? Because some people, they just don't. They, they're not blessed with the touch. They're not good kissers, you know. And a lot of females, not a lot, but, you know, enough are. That's another thing they never bring up. They always talk about how guys don't know shit in bed and you just blah, 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 blah. But there's a lot of women out there who, they, they don't know shit either. Not saying they're bad or whatever, but and some of them just are just never going to be good. So if you feel she has the, f- the potential, then then there's hope. So what you have to do is you have to basically... What I used to tell my friends, we used to joke around, just say, you got to tap into her inner whore, all right? And the, there's a couple of ways to do it. One of them, and it's very delicate, dude. It's like one of those fucking action movies where you're sitting there trying to clip the right fucking wire as it's, you know, eight seconds left. Um, there's a couple ways you go about it. Uh, one of the ways is... Well, first of all, there's there's a couple rules. One, as she's trying to open up with you sexually or whatever, don't ever 
judge anything that she wants to do or try and don't ever make fun of anything that she said in bed. If she says some dumb shit, which she's probably going to say because you sound like you're way more experienced. If she's trying to talk dirty for the first fucking time and she says some dumb shit, do not laugh. Yeah, let me tell you about a story so true. We're so meet style and it's all so cool. It's about a garment torn and frayed. Getting his friends, the story conveyed. Walking down the streets with holes in my teeth. Each rip them here, part of me you see. It ain't about the brand of the label it holds. It's about the journey, the stories it unfolds. In these ragged clothes, I find my voice. A testament to resilience. My choice from the streets to the stage. I rock my style in my tattered shirt. I walk that mile. Torn, but still I stand in my ragged attire I command, it's not just fabric It's a statement, I preach in my threadbare garment I find my reason From the barrio to the bar I make my mark in my worn out jeans I leave a spark, and they call it rags But I call it art, and every stitch and tear I play my part, it's the struggle of the streets The hustle so real in my tattered jacket I seal the deal, a symbol of defiance Against the status quo, my passion the pants I let it show, it's not about the riches or the wealth I lack in my faded hoodie, I stay on track It's the heart of the hustle, the grind each day In my worn out kicks, I find my way Ripped and torn, but still I stand In my ragged attire I command It's not just fabric, it's a statement I preach In my threadbare garment I find my reach So here's to the ones with the clothes that tear in our patched up attire we have So let the world see our garments worn For in our rags, our stories are born In the language of the streets we speak In our torn up clothes we find our peak All right. <laughs> You got to do the quiet, but don't ever do that. That is like someone is never more vulnerable than in that, especially a female. You can't, you can't do that. And then what you, what I would do is I would just basically figure out what she's into. Try to figure out what, what some of her fantasies are. All right. So that, that's how I would start it. Find out what some of her fantasies are and you start getting her down that 